Hi, this is Manos Berlakis, and this is video 8.3.1 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a video providing an overview of the retrograde approach. This is a step-by-step -step description of the 10 steps of the retrograde approach, and there will be separate videos describing crossing various types of collaterals, troubleshooting with microcatheter crossing of the collateral, the reverse card troubleshooting, and tips on how to externalize a guide wire or to perform the tip-in technique. There is something magic about the retrograde approach. The retrograde approach can be the decisive technique and allow success in some very complex occlusions, but at the same time, it does have an increased risk of complications. And that is why performing a systematic approach and following each of the 10 steps in a very organized and methodical way can go in a long way in minimizing the risks and optimizing the potential result of the procedure. So starting with the first step, which is to decide that the retrograde approach is the next step. In the original hybrid algorithm, the retrograde approach was recommended for lesions with an ambiguous proximal cap, poor distal target vessel, or lesions with a long occlusion length, as long as there were appropriate interventional collaterals, which means collaterals that the operator felt were conducive to being crossed with wires and microcatheters. And this is very similar to the recommendation for the retrograde approach in the global CTO crossing algorithm. It is done for proximal cap ambiguity. It is one of the three options for crossing along with move the cap and intravascular ultrasound. It is also potentially recommended for vessels with poor quality in the distal vessel, and then if undergrade wiring attempts fail. Second step is to select the collateral, or we should say the retrograde pathway, because it's not always a collateral, it can also be a bypass graft. We do have three options for going retrograde. One is to use bypass grafts, both venous and arterial, both open and occluded. The other one is to use septal collaterals. And the third one is to use epicardial collaterals. Bypass grafts are preferred in most cases because they're often the easier to cross and have the least risk, followed by the septals. And epicardials are the ones with the highest risk, and that is why they're usually reserved until other options fail or are not available. As we mentioned, there are separate videos that describe the specifics of crossing the various types of um, retrograde options. Specifically for bypass grafts, again, they can be arterial or venous, open or occluded, and that can offer an option. But again, uh, it all depends on the morphology of the graft, whether the graft is open, are there any additional septal collaterals or not. The third step is to get a guide wire and a microcatheter into the collateral vessel. And this is typically done by advancing a guide wire, a workhorse in most cases, into the collateral. We don't want uh, aggressive guide wires to avoid injury of the proximal vessel. We also want to make sure that there is no significant disease in the vessel in the donor vessel proximal to the takeoff of the collateral, because if there is, then uh, this is probably best treated first before going retrograde to minimize the risk of ischemia. Once we get the microcatheter inside the collateral or the bypass graft, the next step, step number four, is to cross the collateral with a guide wire. There are different ways to do this, and those vary depending on the type of collateral. If it's a septal collateral, for example, we do have a surfing or a contrast-guided option. If it's a bypass graft, or if it is an epicardial collateral, in general, we do not do surfing, but we just go with contrast guidance. But for septal collateral specifically, advancing a guide wire blindly with rapid rotation without contrast visualization can sometimes uh, and quite often actually be successful in crossing that septal collateral. Moving on to step number five, which is to confirm that the guide wire has entered into the distal true lumen 
and this is done by injecting contrast from the donor vessel. This is a critical step. This is an example of a patient with a right coronary artery CTO. We're trying to cross retrograde through a septal collateral. And although the wire initially seemed to be in the right place, when we do the injection from the donor vessel, it becomes clear that the guide wire is actually either in a cavity, but definitely not inside the collateral, not in the distal trulumen. So this guide wire was redirected. And now we do the injection again from the donor vessel, and we see that the guide wire is indeed into the distal trulumen in the PDA and the distal right coronary artery. So before advancing the microcatheter, it is critical to confirm that the guide wire has crossed into the distal trulumen. Step number six, after the guide wire crosses the collateral, is to cross the collateral with a microcatheter. And this is often easy, but sometimes it may be challenging. And there will be a specific video, 83.3.5, that will discuss the various options for delivering a microcatheter through challenging to deliver collateral vessels. Step number seven is actually to cross the CTO. And this can be done in different ways. The simplest way is to use the retrograde guide wire as a marker of the location of the distal true lumen and then cross the CTO in the undergrade direction. This is called the just marker technique. Another way to cross is to cross from the distal true lumen to the proximal true lumen. This is the retrograde true lumen puncture. And this uh, can work sometimes, but this is more successful in fairly short CTOs. In long CTOs, the retrograde guide wire quite often goes into the extra plug space. This is an example. We do have a fairly short CTO of the right, and then the retrograde wire um, easily advances into the undergrade guide catheter. Confirmation with intravascular ultrasound that we're in the proximal true lumen. And... Um, a nice final result after placing stents. So retrograde to true lumen is a great technique, but unfortunately works only for usually short CTOs. The most common technique for actually crossing the CTO is called reverse CART or reverse control undergrade um, and retrograde tracking. What that means is that we advance an undergrade balloon that uh, is inflated, creating a space for the retrograde guide wire to enter inside the proximal true lumen. The card was an early technique that is used infrequently now, in which the balloon is actually inserted over the retrograde wire, but this can be challenging to do unless the patient has bypass grafts. And there's a variation called confluent balloon in which balloons are inserted from both directions. However, in the vast majority of cases currently, it is reverse card that is being done to achieve crossing if um, either the undergrade or the retrograde guide wire go into the extra plug space. And there is a separate video that will be uploaded, 8.3.6, that will discuss about how to successfully achieve uh, a reverse card. Once we cross the CTO, the next step in most cases is to proceed with externalization of the retrograde guide wire. This is what we are aiming for. What we have here is the retrograde guide catheter. We have a retrograde microcatheter and a retrograde wire. The retrograde wire goes through the collateral vessel, the bypass graft, and then goes through the proximal um, CTO vessel and then comes out through the undergrade guide catheter. So we can use this wire to stand. We're using essentially the front end of the externalization wire to advance our balloons and stands to the lesion. However, there is another option apart from wire externalization. This option is to advance an undergrade wire through the CTO. So even if we cross retrogradely, we can use uh, various techniques such as the TP-in or use a dual lumen microcatheter over the retrograde guide wire to advance an undergrade wire, and then treatment of the CTO proceeds in the standard fashion. There will be a separate video that discusses about how to perform the T-pin technique, and um, that uh, technique is especially important in epicardial collaterals where we want to minimize 
the amount of time that we have retrograde wires through the occlusion because of risk of donor vessel injury. The next step, which is step number nine, is to treat the chronic total occlusion. This is done with lesion preparation, with balloons and other devices, and placing stents. And this is typically done over the externalized guide wire. And then the final step, step number 10, once we've successfully treated the lesion, is to remove the retrograde guide wire and microcatheter, paying careful attention not to cause any injury in the vessels. And uh, this is a critical step because if uh, we start pulling the retrograde guide wire, what uh, automatically happens is for the guide catheter, the donor vessel guide catheter, to dive deep into the vessel and potentially injure it. And that is why before we remove the retrograde gear, what we do, we advance the microcatheter all the way through the CTO, through the stand, all the way into the undergrade guide catheter if we can. Then we back both guides back into the aorta and then we remove the retrograde guide wire we actually want to leave the retrograde guide wire through the collateral vessel and pull the microcatheter back do an injection in the donor vessel to confirm that no injury has occurred in the donor vessel and then re-advance the microcatheter and uh, remove completely the retrograde guide wire so to summarize, the retrograde approach is done by using 10 steps. Once again, having a methodical approach, going step by step without trying to jump ahead, can help with make this procedure more successful and minimize the potential risks that are associated with this approach. Thank you.